Oh well, hold on y'all. Okay, my camera's kind of cold because it's been in the AC. Sorry, my nose is itching. So good morning family and friends. I love you guys. I hope you're enjoying the content I'm giving you. So, you know the drill. Coffee. It is time for my Starbucks. So, all I gotta say is we're going on a little history thingy. Museum or whatever you wanna call it. And if, if you look really closely, you'll see Miss Stephanie. There's my girl. Look at her trying to be so nice and happy. All right, my friends and family. I'm gonna try to set you up a little bit here. Oh, I hope I'm not pushing buttons. Crappily. I'm terrible. So, ugh. Yeah, you guys saw me with a cigarette. Wham. I try not to smoke while I'm on camera. I really do. But before we go to where we're going, um, again, I really want to thank everybody that has subscribed to my videos. I really need more subscribers. I know that. Um, but I also need, every time you watch my videos, I really need you to hit that thumbs up. Um, YouTube is going through a thing where they're changing rules and stuff. So now their new rule is every YouTuber has to have their face in the video now. Um, they're now starting to really count on those thumbs up too now. So, I mean, you can actually go to YouTube and you can see the rules they have for you to start getting paid from them and what you got to do and everything like that. Um, so, but I mean, I really do appreciate it, and I really would love to have all those likes. Um, when I see all those thumbs up, it makes me feel good, and it, feel, it makes me feel like, oh my god, you guys really do like my stuff, and you really do like me. Um, I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea, which is fine. Um, but where we're going, it's another kind of like a museum um i'm not sure how it works i know they do tour tours or whatever you want to call it um but it's a little windy out here believe it or not it's amazing but it feels nice in here um i don't know what the temperature is right now but that breeze feels nice uh i am doing something saturday so therefore, uh, we'll have another, it'll be another venture. Um, just to let you guys look at that pretty sky. I know it's going to be hot as heck as hell out here later today, but it's a it is exactly 9.23 in the morning. The place opens at 9.30, so I'm running a little late getting there, but that's okay. I'm not in a big rush. I really don't have much planned today besides this. Um, it's something looked interesting and looked neat. I don't know if it's really haunted or anything. But... Um... I just figured give you guys a variety. I know some things I do, I'm like off the wall. I don't stick to one thing. I don't stick to, you know, the same old stuff and everything. I'm always switching it up. So I hope you guys like the content and I'll see you guys soon. Love you. Bye. Alright, y'all. This is where we're going. Um... Gotta wait till 11 o'clock, and it's now 10 o'clock, so I got an hour to waste. And I'm in an area I do not know shit. 
God help me. I'll be back soon. Love you. So as you can see, they're doing construction. That's going to be a Cook's Hospital. I'm guessing that's where they... I don't know what they're doing over there, but... They're building in a way. So, I'm in an area I have no fucking clue about. So, let's go drive around and look, I guess. Okay, this place is called Thristle Hill. I'm probably... Uh, I had you facing the wrong way. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> this place is called Thristle Hill, and I'm probably saying it wrong, and I probably butchered it, but it's close enough. Anyways, there, I got five more minutes to wait before they open up. <laughs> but this is what it's going to look like. And he's only going to charge me 15 bucks for this. I don't, I'm not worried about the other one. I don't know nothing about that. So, but this is what I'm about to tour. And I will do what I normally do. Give you guys the information in the blog somewhere, some way, somehow, and put it in the description. So, I'm going to stand out here and wait till it's time, 11 o'clock, oh, that they do it exactly on time. So, I will see you guys soon. I love you. I've got to find out if I can record and video, so I will talk to you guys later. But like I said, it's busy. Uh, starts at kind of the prehistory of this area. It was just pasture land out here, but then it became... Uh, uh, this kind of ended up being where anyone had money wanted to uh, purchase up a lot to buy to build a mansion out here and also didn't want to be too close to the, the uh, vice district basically the health of anchor that uh, was still pretty well in Sconce and southern and downtown for worth of the cattle ride days all the problems and some of the oh there. okay so nobody wanted to be too close to that and yeah so they started anyone had money started uh, buying up lots out here to build up mansions and so this particular lot was bought in 1903 by uh, Albert Button Warden usually shortened as A.B. for his bride lecture as you uh, roughly mean pride uh, Lecture Wagner they just got married in 1902 and so they uh, had actually met on their both they're both on the world tours in uh, Kathmandu and the Himalayas in 1900 that was when you sent the rich the rich yeah. the world tours and such and they meet the other rich kids and so he was uh, basically a trust fund kid and uh, his uh, wife of lecture was daughter W.T. Wagner who was the patriarch of a Wagner ranch at the time that ranch is still there it's not in the family uh, and so uh, uh, he uh, allegedly also put a lot of pressure for the house to, to be built here because A.B. was from Philadelphia, so they didn't want him getting whisked off to the East Coast, uh, or want, didn't want the electric to take off to the East Coast. Right. And so uh, they uh, built the house just between 1903 to 1904. But you, if you get hired on Paris hands, you get, uh, get something built pretty quickly, even back uh, then. So I had all that yeah. Time. And uh, <laughs> so they uh, uh, actually lived here from 1904 to 1909. And then Chris is 1909. Uh, WT gave big chunks of the ranch to elect her, her, her two brothers, so they would start getting into the uh, taking care of the you know the whole family business up there. And so they went off and built another mansion for themselves up there on their plot of the of the ranch. And they ended up sending this house to a guy named Winfield Scott, and he's not the uh, he's not the general. He's just kind of a coincidental name there. But he was uh, they, uh, he had kind of first five investments. He was he had like a hotel in St. Louis and a hotel in downtown Fort Worth and some ranch land. And so uh, he actually didn't like the look of the facade they put up. It was originally a colonial revival bill, but they changed it to this Georgian revival bill it is now. So they basically we got some before we have photos of what happened. But oh, okay. mostly it was they uh, swapped it out for a lot of uh, wood for stone. Gotcha. There, out there and took down some flourishes. Yeah. And so the. Uh, Scott Jr., their son, and he was, he's kind of another story, but he wasn't really in, uh, interested in holding on to the house. Uh, so he uh, sold it to a nonprofit called the Girls Service League for just $17,500. Oh, okay. Uh, because everything, uh, going into the Second World War, everything had been rezoned in this area. And so oh, okay. uh, the, uh, that's when a lot of the bulldozers, uh, kind of between the, uh, the Second World War and the 70s, that's when a lot of bulldozers were here. Gotcha. And these were just, these sort of big mansions for entertainment just were kind of falling out of fashion. And, and so that's when a lot of money would on to like Westover River Crest around here. Yeah. Those kind of neighborhoods. 
And so uh, this house became that girl's dorm from 1940 to 1968. Uh, that was the, kind of the most active years they were using it. And so uh, by 1968, they didn't really need it anymore for that. And so it was, and it was being used kind of as a, a, girl for, a home for girls coming to the city to learn trades or get jobs who didn't have them like another kind of at the time or socially acceptable place to stay with like relatives or anything. Gotcha. And so they, uh, by 68, they didn't need it for that anymore. So they tried to find the market. But of course, everybody was more interested in that land at that point. And so the house kind of just uh, sat there like from the kind of 68 till uh, the mid 70s. And between that time, there's some rumors started floating around about becoming a parking garage. That's when some concerned citizens uh, got together and, and kind of grew together enough funds to purchase it from our Papa called Texas Heritage to take care of it. Gotcha. And so they did a lot of heavy lifting from uh, more or less kind of 76 to 2006, so putting everything back together on the first and second floor. So you're mostly just be seeing the first and second floors today. Okay. And, uh, the, uh, uh, by 2006, fortunately, they couldn't keep the show going anymore, so that's when they gave it to a store for work. And they had been running the McFarland house over there. And uh, the last owner over there, actually, last month, she was 100, uh, 100 years old, right in 1978. And one of her last wishes was to make sure that her home didn't follow the same fate as everything else in this area. So uh, they kind of passed a few different hands and ended up with a junior league here in Fort Worth and used headquarters for a time. And then uh, when they didn't need any more, they uh, already formed Stork Ward sort of to start taking care of the house and uh, and things like that. And so Stork Ward started uh, running McFarland House and kind of uh, slowly expanded into being uh, somewhat uh, kind of locally active, trying to raise awareness about endangered properties in the city. Wow. That's kind of the short ish of it. This is. Uh, Thistle Hill's had a lot of uh, lucky breaks, kind of dodging the bulldozers around here, because it's really just Thistle Hill. The Women's Club's uh, preserved a little enclave over there. Yeah, I saw that when I was driving over yeah. there. And uh, there's some uh, bungalows, kind of 20s bungalows, that are up right over there on 8th. And, you know, there's a Farland House and the Cap's House right next to it have survived from right around that 1899, oh, okay. kind of around that era. Uh, but, and the Texas White House bed and breakfast is uh, just down on 8th. But uh, oh, okay. other, you kind of have to go uh, really searching for any that have uh, managed to uh, dodge all the uh, industrialization and hospitalization around yeah. here. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so the foyer here, you can see, was uh, designed with uh, a kind of almost like an open concept entertainment space. They had uh, guards and references of banquet tables here, and they also would have had you know, kind of cocktail hours and such around here. And then off to the side, uh, this was the era when you have a men's parlor. Oh, okay. Wow. Smoking their cigars and... Yeah, those brandy and such. <laughs> yeah. God, all these old books. Wow. I would have had fun reading all of them, mm -hmm. but <laughs> to be honest. Oh, wow. Interesting. <laughs> and luckily for the certain areas of the house, the girls' dorm didn't have a lot of money to remodel anything, but they did have enough money to put a bunch of lead-based paint all over things like that stenciling. Oh, okay. They did end up preserving uh, that stenciling up there. So that's good. Yeah. Cool. That's gorgeous. <laughs> And uh, most of the furnishings kind of uh, walked away when Winfield Scott Jr. ended up selling the house. But certain things like this is Mrs. Scott's Tiffany style stained glass lamp and the billiard table. And I'll point out some of the pictures are still original. Okay. One of those got kind of swapped out over the years by yeah. the girls' dorm. And, and those, the these things were like to get services and oh, stuff? Uh, so these are actually the light switches, but we do have some of the uh, uh, servants kind of call buttons. And the, the oh, okay. Yeah. I thought that was and really. The, uh, push buttons are uh, just for Oh, okay. I was thinking they were... <laughs> yeah, so the servants' uh, bits kind of are, are, I'll point out, when seen to look like kind of doorbell buzzers. Yeah. Buttons. And so then the men are off over there, the ladies are over here in the ladies' parlor. Okay. And originally it was all the dark stained wood all through here, but Mrs. Scott had a change to the white curly maple in here. Wow. That's pretty. That's gorgeous. Sconces on the columns are some of the original ones that were, uh, they were, well, they, they about lasted because they were screwed into the wall here. Uh, they're brass uh, sconces that were made by Ball and Hubbard. They were kind of the, towards the top end stuff they could buy at the time. Gotcha. And if you're 
here is the uh, carriage entrance where uh, the uh, this is sort of like long mudroom here. So, oh, okay. Uh, they could step off of that marble step out there on the Portica share and then just kind of coming through here during inclement weather or anything like that. Gotcha. Here we got billiard room. All Scottish bogwood in here. This was stuff they pulled out of the old uh, kind of ancient wood that was just petrified on the Scottish bogs. Yeah. And those are the uh, Scots up there. Have you ever heard this play by itself? <laughs> uh, no, no, actually not. Uh, <laughs> either from the player mechanism or anybody else. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's, I forget where I was. There's a while back. I think it was in San Antonio. Um, oh, what is that? Hotel, I can't uh, think of it. Manger yes, yeah. the manger. They said that they have one in the downstairs in the old Victorian oh, yeah. side, uh -huh. and they say every once in a while you'll hear it go off, <laughs> and it's because they used to play that. <laughs> it was a guy who was blind, <laughs> and uh, he used to, yeah. Oh, uh, we're about to do the Crockett Hotel next. matches with the billiard table here they were it's kind of leaving score for things other than billiards i was gonna say what is it <laughs> i know these because i'm uh, kind of abacus yeah there. they used to have those yeah that's but, some good old-fashioned lobbying going on there uh they kind of uh, uh burke burnett was sort of the ringleader of this little uh, uh shindig here but uh, he, they were uh, they got uh, teddy to come along because they had this guy who was a novelty at the time this uh, named abernathy he would uh, wrestle wolves barehanded so teddy yeah. had to come see that and they managed to uh, have his ear for a while to uh, maintain their access to some uh, kind of grazing land up around the name american big pasture recreation land up by Oklahoma. so that was kind of all about that yeah wow and this uh script uh looks like it's in latin or german but it is in english and just kind of an old uh script uh, written on up there it's uh so they said the motivational things like drink down all that kindness now's the day now's the hour and practice is the best instructor so little things like that all the way around oh okay and some of it just got wore they, off uh, they got uh, lost some water damage in the guest bathroom up there over the years so, oh wow yeah, so that's what happened to those oh wow and this is one of those servants call buttons here okay sorry oh. I'll edit that part out. I think I got you a little bit, no. not much. <laughs> I don't want to get you in trouble or anything. Yeah. You know. Just in case, because I don't think we'll have anybody record in a while. But uh, this is, uh, uh, they have all these pocket doors as well down here in all the rooms, so they can all be sealed off. Oh, wow. Okay, I'll follow you. <laughs> I just look. And the, uh, there's the guest half bath down there as well. That was pretty exciting. That's that to the. Wow, that's pretty. Uh, I've been, uh, some of the records I've been looking at recently, someone was doing some research around uh, 1989, 1994, uh, uh, those text at the time, and they found that it didn't really have a particular kind of Wagner kind of crest meaning. It was just sort of a trendy uh, kind of Greco Roman symbol that they're up there. Okay. Uh, Tiffany Stiles and Glass does a lovely survive too. This one is exposed to the outside. It's got kind of an ironwork bird cage around it on the back of the house. And it could pivot open on its center and it was kind of half of the breezeway coming through the oh, house. Oh, okay. Any other half of the Yeah, because they didn't have air conditioning stuff. back then. <laughs> old heater. <laughs> yeah, they kind of older and radiators all around the house. Uh, yeah, they had these fireplaces, but they were a little more for uh, show because the yeah. radiators doing a lot of the work. Ouch. Yeah. Now, this side of the house are the guest bedrooms. Oh, okay. Wow. Party dress there. Oh. It's all mahogany uh, wood trim here, so they tried to call the furniture mahogany that they were collecting. Ooh, that's a pretty dress. Man, I thought that was horses. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, they even have like the old luggages on the staircases at the manger. It's pretty neat. And that's Electra left. They got married up there. Oh wow. And this they have this uh, balcony out here. They can step over that. Uh, they could open up this window and step over that window, still out to that balcony out there. So that oh wow. Extra space there. That's cool. You get fresh air and everything. Never break, always fight, never quit. And those uh, transoms still have the wedding ring motif in them. Uh, the uh, since this was Electra's wedding cottage here. Gotcha. Wow. And this uh, guest bathroom uh, used to go uh, have access to the landing out there, but then Mrs. Scott was on a quest out of a closet space, so she added these uh, closets uh, kind of here for the bedrooms and chopped it down a little bit. Wow. <laughs> and that's the last uh, dual gas electric fixture we've got in the house. And they were more concerned. They had electricity brought in from the beginning, but they were, of course, they had the gas lighting sort of head to the beds. On the yeah, and then here's another bell thing. Yeah, yeah so you get your toilet paper. Oh, wow. So you're out of, you know, you get <laughs> Rain, here, bring me toilet paper. paper or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So how many tours do you, you, you yourself have done? Uh, let's see. I guess I'll go. Do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame. Uh, to help them coordinate with them. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of make sure that they're ready for the events. But uh, mostly, uh, of course, it's, it's all pretty much all seasonal. It kind of depends on when people are coming through on vacation or when they've got time. Gotcha. Like right now, school ramping up. It's been a scatter shot. Yeah. Ooh, that is a gorgeous dress. I'd be happy in it. Because it's purple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I didn't uh, see those the, hats. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the clothing we've got is uh, a lot of vintage collections of things. Uh, uh, mostly, there's not a whole lot that's, that they could really tie back to Electra or Elizabeth. Oh, okay. So it would have been tough with Electra because she was uh, kind of infamously churning through outfits all the time. Yeah, it's just the general idea of stuff they wore back then. Yeah. Time for the pain, let the grind. I could change. Hang with the dog. They're kind of trying to use lion dog incense holders. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, especially, had kind of a pretty eclectic collection of knickknacks and things she had collected, so uh, that's kind of why a lot of that stuff has been wow. scattered around here. So it's a really good impression of what she probably would have had in here. Goodness. And this is the upstairs sitting room here. It's sort of their uh, family's private living room since everything's more public facing downstairs. And these are more areas where Mrs. Scott was on a quest for that closet space. In my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb. The only went out to the back wall of the closets there. Oh, wow. Oh, what a pretty dress. And this uh, balcony here used to go all the way across the whole uh, second floor of the house, so that guy kind of chopped down this more Juliet style, size one here, just on top of the front door. And the columns are also originally wooden out there. And now each one is a single piece of limestone from Indiana. There's only one quarry in the, in, at the time in the, in the U.S. that can make those in, in pieces like this, single pieces like this, and then they have to have custom rail cars made to bring them here. Yeah. birthday kind of matches up with the house. Uh, the technically started construction in 1903. He was born in 1903. And so uh, when it was 80th, when it was 80th birthday, they kind of talked him into helping out with this fundraiser here. And so uh, it, well, I think it's most of the momentum and the uh, tension was with him. So there was only the first annual. There was never a second annual where he yeah. had one on there. But he did talk about that fundraiser in 83. Ooh, that is a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, so. That was donated by uh, one of our members not too long ago. Uh, uh, he's was oh, we haven't had it independently phrased yet, but he's pretty sure it's like a uh, it is a real Spanish colonial kind of oh okay deal. Wow. And this is the ladies' changing room in here, where definitely Electra and uh, uh, Elizabeth would have spent a lot of time. And uh, Elizabeth added those department store style mirrors there. Okay. I'm just gonna do this so I don't.
Being nice view, all that was in here. Yeah, yeah. The, you used to be able to see downtown pretty easily from here, and uh, this was on a little bit of a, a rise. You can see here, so they kind of looked down their noses at everybody else in the neighborhood out yeah. there. Uh, this whole area was called Quality. Ended up being called Quality Hill when all the mansions were here, and was basically the mansion district. Yeah, I'm avoiding the mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this is master bathroom in here, and uh, Mrs. Scott had changed out these, uh, the you know, sink and the toilet over the years, uh, probably around her time. But uh, this is the original tub here from 1904. Oh, really? Yeah, it's built in. And wow. How interesting. had a balcony like that gets yeah, better on the other side but then it got enclosed and it remodeled that's more floor space out here wow and this french villa furniture usually we had it on display downstairs and then again you up here to make room for the weddings and events downstairs oh okay and the rug and the cushions are on the other point while we just had our uh, beautiful artwork show over at the mcfarland house uh, yeah early this year we're gonna have the next one probably this next october Quite decided on the location. Mrs. Scott's niece there in the middle. Uh, she kind of started chaperoning her in her little uh, escapades and little adventures around the region. Oh, wow. And so this uh, room, as we'll see the room below it down back on the first floor, were big additions in the remodel. This is kind of uh, basically a big swamp cooler design with around this time of year in mind. Uh, so this was, uh, I had, they had the tiles wetted down and there was a, they had the windows opened up and there was a porcelain bladed fan up in that grate up in the middle of the ceiling up there. Yeah. And then they'd uh, create that evaporative cooling cycle out here. And the fire marshal made the girls dorm had this fire escape on the back. That's why it's hanging off the back of the house. Oh, okay. yeah, makes sense. And that's the uh, kind of the ruins of the water tower out there. Uh, they did have electricity brought in from the beginning, but uh, since they didn't have any city water infrastructure out here, they had a well and a water tower out back. They actually had an electric pump as well. And it was tall enough to get pressure. You went up to the servants' bathroom on the third floor. Oh, wow. And by the, uh, by the 40s, they were on city water, and when it got knocked over in a big windstorm, the uh, girls' dorm didn't feel compelled to put it back up. So it just kind of, uh, the platform's just kind of basically been like that since then. Oh, wow. Ooh. This is the nursery in here. Oh, wow. The old house. Holy moly. That is so neat. Never had one when I was a kid, but I always thought they were cool. Oh, they don't even have light thingies. Yeah, yeah. The, it's got elemental switches up there on the roof line, and it's got fuses. <laughs> wow, that is pretty neat. i got to get a picture of that. That is so cool. Scott's also added on a full bathroom. They kind of bumped it out on the uh, side of the house there. Oh, that is so neat. Through that door. And they also added a corner closet right over here. That's cool how the front of the house looks. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's neat. This was a uh, pass-through hallway closet that electric can use to get back here. Something's going on from the master bedroom because uh, the sleeping porch didn't exist in the original build of the house and otherwise you have to run down the servant's hallway here. Going up back up to the third floor, and uh, there's some kind of funky floorboards, and it's also not very efficient, so we don't really be going up 
there. Uh, but they had a dedicated bedroom for the butler and then one for a kind of flexible number of female servants. They also shared a bathroom that was getting, uh, was getting pressure from that uh, water tower out back. And uh, the rest of the third floor is taken up by that ballroom slash trunk room. Usually we use it more for the trunk room side of things now right at the moment. Uh, but when they want to have some parties, they uh, have the servants push out everything off of the side, all, everything that's stored up there, and have some New Year's Eve parties and birthday parties with the boys and New Year's Eve or kind of dance club parties. And so they would uh, do things like that up there. Even though you would have to, it was such a trendy thing at the time, even though you were having to march everybody up these back stairs. It was just a big event. It was just how it was. <laughs> <laughs> and this goes back right down to the kitchen, so that's oh, wow. sort of the bottom of it, down, back, back down to the kitchen. And the uh, handrail was only added about eight years ago, so that was, the servants were getting up and down without it. Carrying all those toilet papers and... and yeah, yeah, and everything. They were hauling up here for the kids and the, the family wow. uh, in the bedroom. But uh, the uh, this is, you can see the iron uh, kind of bird cage around the exterior single glass window there, and this is the window that's lining up the interior one. Oh, okay. And this is an illustration of the farmhouse. house. Oh, that's pretty. Kind of looks like this one. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a Queen Anne Victorian, and you can't see it's you know, asymmetrical. It has a lot of copper actually on the on the roof. And so these are the before and after photos of the uh, before and after the remodel. Uh, so that one's the uh, original Colonial Revival build, the uh, 1904 build. Here's the uh, 1912 uh, build here. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty. And then that's kind of an impression of like right when the wardens uh, plopped down the house and built it, and that's the water tower out back. So it's another place oh, that didn't, you know, they didn't cut any corners, didn't yeah. look utilitarian, it looked like a lighthouse out back. Wow. This is the charter for the uh, fundraiser. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And there uh, are stories that like a woman in white went up downstairs and a guy in white had a very appropriate uh, tennis gear and kind of went downstairs and had time to stick to this back if they are. They probably come at 3 o'clock at night. <laughs> the witch an hour, more likely. And this is one of the servants' quick pass through hallways goes back to the uh, kitchen. And so this is how they can get up here into the foyer with their uh, you know, cocktail trays and everything like that. Mm -hmm. so we've got the in here. And this is how I added the plate rails up there. They've got a little uh, kind of in indention in them so you can lean plates up on them because you always have a big china collection to show off. Gotcha. <laughs> The servants' call button in here was actually underneath the dining room table, so they just smack it with their foot to get the servants in here. Oh, okay, yeah, I remember back those. And this is the conservatory over here. Got an indoor greenhouse. So they have that grass rain too to go off with. Yeah, so when they water the plants and all that. This is the morning room back here. We call it the morning room, but it's kind of Mrs. Scott's breakfast nook and breakfast room back here. Well, that's uh, the Warden's second son, Buster. Uh, they have one son, Tom. Uh, personally, he actually passed away at the age of 25. Uh, oh, but wow. the second son, Buster, uh, did uh, live a, a lot longer. And he had a son named Bucky, who had uh, been, uh, uh, he was one of the more, he was involved in some of the recent kind of family feuding with the, uh, the kind yeah. of this big uh, kind of uh, event with the, uh, with the ranch. but. Uh, uh, he was trying to keep it in the family, but uh, uh, unfortunately, he kind of lost that. So, so. Oh, wow. And these walls are actually all hand painted on the designer show houses here. Uh, the, uh, uh, they, found, they were done to match the sailing ship sponsors that these had been found in the window seat over there by Texas Heritage with no real uh, no one around to explain how they got yeah. there. So they just kind of uh, decided to go with the theming on the blue here. That is a, it's a manufactured one up top, that uh, wallpaper up there, but this is all hand painted. Oh, wow. Patterns. And this is the servant's call panel here. Oh. That was linked up to all the, uh, the buttons. And there was a bell up top that would get their attention and then the arrows would be swinging to the rooms that were calling for them. Oh, wow. That's neat. Yeah. 
and the kitchen back here has been through a few different lives, but it was original pinewood back here, and the uh, doors and trim is still original pinewood. Uh, the, uh, uh, the girls' uh, dorm had kind of put this mid-century cabinetry here, it's got a photo here of that era, and uh, they actually did have a cook stove inside, they weren't concerned about setting the house on fire, but we are now, so that's why we just have the bridge room back there in the morning. Oh, house. okay. Yeah. <laughs> and the, uh, the butler's pantry kind of got converted to our office back down there, and the, uh, uh, and, the, and, the, and he was just uh, down in the basement, and said there's some funky stuff down there, so we, of course, we don't go down there. Yeah. Today. But the boiler is still uh, down there, I've got a photo of that, so to give you an impression of what it's like down there. Hi. <laughs> So that's kind of with brick all the way down and the concrete floor oh, down wow. the bottom. <laughs> <sighs> okay, yeah, the, I guess they, uh, either they found another they decided this pulley or something. I tripped it so it's not running over the weekend. I'll be reset on Monday. Right. Have a good day. <laughs> and this is the stairwell. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's the back of the certain staircase there. And this has kind of always been a utility closet uh, back in here, and just kind of is ours now. Yeah. And this is a service porch out here. This uh, was originally open air. You can see the brickwork is kind of all outward facing here, mm -hmm. uh, but then it got it closed from the remodel. That's more uh, kind of an extra enclosed uh, yeah. area out here. And the usual slab is actually on a slant so the rainwater would just kind of wash out. We ended up leaving the copper spouser outside behind the bushes here and the wall out there. That's how everything can just kind of drain out when yeah. it's in there. And uh, so that that is uh, an icebox. It's not the icebox they had in the corner here, but uh, yeah. they have that, uh, of course, sitting out here. And this back here was a walk-in pantry that they added on along with the uh, in the remodeling, but we turned into a wheelchair restroom. Back here. Oh, that's cool. Oh, and so they did have the, uh, it was pretty big, they had the window there too for it was naturally lit during the day. Yeah. Oh, and the uh, carriage house out here is actually, according to the Texas Historical Commission, it's basically just us and the McFadden Ward House that have been on there using it, still have these uh, kind of horse drawn, horseless carriage transitional period, you know, kind of ones left within city limits in Texas. And AB actually opened up uh, pretty much the first part of the ship here in Fort Worth, at least one of the first prominent ones that uh, was uh, getting mentioned in the papers. And so he had, at one point, he had six out of the 12 cars the city had registered, like uh, I think it was uh, around 19, that was around 1910 or so. <laughs> and so uh, uh, he was renting out you know, and selling early motorcycles and cars. And uh, he and his chauffeur actually went out to Denver and bought uh, 1903 Wind Touring and managed to drive down here in 1904. So it was kind of a it was also the same year that same model of car uh, managed to make it from uh, California to, uh, I have to double check if it was either, he made it to Washington DC or New York City. Uh, it was the first kind of you know vehicle, to, uh, car to make it across the continental US. And that uh, car he used is still on display in the Smithsonian. Oh, okay. Guy named, guy named Horatio. Cool. <laughs> <Five eights. laughs> I guess. What's, what's up with the carriage house? Oh, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, so it's got that uh, kind of garage area out there behind, that's behind where the uh, sliding doors are, where the general storage was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, stables are off to the side, off to the right there, there's three stalls, and there's kind of a tack room uh, where those three windows are, where the saddlery and bridlery is being handled, and we still had a little hand gas pump out there too, so that was how they were filling up the cars. Oh. And the chauffeur and the groundskeeper had kind of a mini duplex out here, where there was concrete, uh, concrete steps are, and they had uh, plumbing and, of course, the electricity all from the beginning, so they had pretty, oh, wow. pretty, uh, relative, pretty good uh, accommodations here, actually. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Oh, was that something you guys built? Or? Uh, the, uh, the tea house was added on by Mrs. Scott, and the pergola uh, was also added on by her. This this particular one was rebuilt in 190, uh, or sorry, uh, 2008. I have to start to. Oh, okay. Dates for it together, but uh, I mean, it's it's been through different, a few different versions of it, but it's the pretty much how it was. Oh, okay. So pretty much rebuilt what she had. Rebuilt what it was, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Well, maybe next time I'll do the other building. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're on the same uh, schedule we are, so. Okay. If there's any kind of unusual event. Where to win at night.
I never miss that stack Taking big swings, put your hand to the back Put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag Cause I sing what I mean and I bring it to the mad light Ain't got time to kill, I got time to fail I took a red pill, I know life's short So I wanna live real, but how is it supposed to feel? They wanna say my name, but they holding back They wanna say they hate, but they know it's cap I ain't play no games, I just do that's fact And I don't feel no shame, it's a mood you lack I go crazy Alright, got some pictures of here So we shall go And that will conclude the vlog For today There's another adventure coming tomorrow I don't know if I'll be with my husband Or I'll be by myself We'll be deciding on that one I understand he has his own YouTube channel to do too, and I get it, and I understand, but, I mean, I like to go with just, you know, because it'd be fun, but, um, we'll see. We are going to be doing, going back to Grapevine, and where the Peace Circle was, but we're going to do the... I call it trolley because it looks like a trolley, but it's a train trolley train. We're gonna be I'm gonna be doing that for sure tomorrow. Um, it might be horrible because it'll be hot as heck. This is Texas. What do you expect? So I am going to conclude this video. I want to say thank you for watching. Please give the thumbs up and enjoy and please tell your friends and have your friends tell their friends their friends tell their friend you know so on and so on so love you guys thank you for watching family and friends I ain't lazy, track after track, I work on the sh daily pass me the jack, right as fuel got me hazy about to unpack all these shit I've been chasing go we got the history of this place pretty interesting I think I'm gonna go ahead and get this Ooh, I don't like that step <laughs> look at that flowers come out here and see tea outside all right dang it really that much tour I thought we'd do the outside but I guess not so I am gonna get the picture of this over here Oh, that ain't nothing important. But there's what he was talking about, the water well. It's like massively overgrown around here. But it's pretty cool. I want to get a video of that. So this is the carriage house he was talking about, and I asked about it. So I just wanted to point it out and get a picture of it. Or a video of it, sorry. Not really. I, you know what? I've got visions in my head Like memories after death To be a legend instead Of something you can forget